Well, uh, this time I'm going to give you a ghost story. A true ghost story. Now, wait a minute. No matter how skeptical you are, I'd like to make you a little proposition. I'd like to bet you that before I finish, you're going to believe it. As impossible as this story seems, I think I'm going to be able to convince you that it's true. One evening, I sat in a little cafe in Paris, talking with a fellow who was attached to the Paris Detective Bureau, or as they call it, the Paris Sûreté. As I had been with the United States Secret Service for a number of years, we naturally talked shop, crime and crime detection. This fellow told me a yarn, one of the most uncanny cases in the records of the Paris Sûreté. He said that residents in the neighborhood of the San Panas Cemetery had reported the appearance of a ghost. Like all incidents of this sort, their descriptions of the specter were rather vague. One man claimed he had seen the thing at night as he passed the cemetery. It had thrust its head up above the stone wall that surrounded the place and leered at him. A horrible face, chalk white, the eyes lifeless and staring, the lips set in a ghastly, mirthless grin. The man didn't stop to investigate further details. Then there was a girl, a domestic, employed in one of the homes near there. She claimed that in passing the cemetery late that one evening, a figure had leaped out of the bushes at her. What did the figure look like? Her only description was that it was horrible, that it made no sound. She ran screaming for help. The monster followed her, or uh, so she said, its footsteps making no noise against the flagged pavement. A gendarme reached the scene just as the girl crumpled up in a faint. But he reported he saw no pursuer. If there had been something, it had vanished. The police paid little attention to these stories. Ghost scares are common enough everywhere. Someone starts a rumor, and imagination does the rest. But one morning, somebody discovered something near the cemetery that seemed to point to the fact that this was no ordinary ghost scare. The evidence indicated murder. A very unusual, brutal type of murder. What was found was a human hand. A hand that had apparently been hacked off at the wrist. A search was made. And several other dismembered portions of the body were found. But not enough to establish the identity of the victim. Now, of course, this didn't mean that the murderer was a ghost. The police didn't even consider the ghost angle of it at all. And then one rainy January night... A belated pedestrian passed the cemetery, his footsteps echoing eerily as he walked along. from the shadow of the wall. Right, wait a moment. Uh, this man's dead. Oh, well, I, I couldn't help it. It was it was self-defense, self-defense. I tell you, he, he tried to rob me. How did you kill him? Uh, I struck at him. Struck at him. I struck him on the head with my cane. With this? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, you hit him on the head with it? Yes, yes, when he leaped at me. Oh, I didn't stop to think. I just, I just... Just struck at him. Oh, he leaped at you, eh? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, he almost threw me to the ground. He overpowered me. What do you mean, he overpowered you? Oh, I told you. He leaped at me. And... Why, he's an old man. He couldn't have overpowered you. Oh, he did. He did. He sprang at me. He, he sprang at me like a, like a tiger. Just a moment. Oh. 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 Now, where's your knife? My, my knife? Yes, the knife you stabbed him with. Stabbed him? Stabbed him? Why? Why, you don't think I... I st- stabbed him? Oh. Yeah, yeah, what's going on here, huh? What's happening? Well, Dupre, I think we've caught the ghost of San Panas. That old fellow's been stabbed to death. Oh, oh, you must be mad. I, I didn't kill him. I only... You're just... under arrest. I warn you that anything you say may be used against you. But you can't arrest me. I, I didn't kill him. I, I tell you, he... He tried to rob me. He, he tried to rob me. Dupre, you stay here and watch the body. 
I'll send the wagon for it as soon as I take this man to the district station. Oh, no. No, no. You you can't take me, I tell you. I didn't do it. I'm not a murderer. It was self-defense. Keep he, quiet. He, he, now, come on. Boy. And so the search for the fiend who lurked in the shadows of San Fernar Cemetery seemed to have come to an end. The mystery was solved. The murderer caught practically red-handed. Later that evening, in the district station... Come in. Well, uh, have you finished searching for him? Yes, sir. Find a knife? No, sir. But the prey just brought this in. Hmm. An infantry bayonet. Where did he find this? It was near the cemetery wall. Mm-hmm. Well, this is just about all the evidence we need, I think. Has it been examined for bloodstains and fingerprints? Yes, sir. But lying there in the rain, they were washed off. Mm. But that's the knife he did it with, sir. Yes, I think you're right. I think we've caught the ghost of San Fernas. Oh, Bono doesn't know you found this, does he? No, sir. Good. Now, I'll put it in the drawer here... And when I bring it out, I'll wager I'll be able to get a complete confession. Oh, uh, you might tell Dr. Mortimer about it. Tell him the man was stabbed in the throat with a bayonet, and we have the bayonet. Yes, sir. And tell him to report to me as soon as he has finished examining the body. Why, this case is going to be an easy one. Uh, have you got Bono's report there? Yes, sir. Well, let me have it. And bring Bono in. Yes, sir. Tell Dr. Mortimer what I told you. Yes, sir. Uh, sit down, Bono. Thank you. Now, I'll read these questions to you and your answers, just to make sure I have them correct. Your name is Victor Bono. Yes. Age 36, not married, residing at 16 Rue Moulin. Yes. Employed as a clerk by the firm of Roger and Son. Yes, sir. On the evening of January 30th, while you were passing the San Pernas Cemetery, you allege an, uh, a man sprang out of the shadows and tried to rob you. Hmm. Let me see. About what time was that? Well, I don't know exactly. Uh, sometime between 12 and 1 o'clock. Between 12 and 1 o'clock. You struck him with your cane and called for help. Yes. Officer Valsan responded, and when he arrived, he found the man dead. But I didn't kill him. Don't you see? He, he attacked me. He tried to rob me, and I... This, I... this isn't a confession. Oh. Why, it's simply a statement confirming Valsan's report. I'm merely reading your own answers to the questions you were asked. Now, all I want to know is whether your answers were put down correctly. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, they're correct. Now, uh, I'd like to ask you some other questions. You stated that you live uh, at number 16, Rue Malone. What were you doing in the vicinity of San Bernard? I, uh, I was looking for a gentleman, a Mr. Cartier. He, mm. He's a customer of our firm, and he owes us a small sum, and... And I thought that I would try and collect it. I I wanted to close my books for the month, tomorrow. Did you find him? No, sir. No, no, he he wasn't there. Do you ordinarily set out to collect bills between 12 and 1 o'clock at night? Oh, no. No, no, of course not. But, but Gartier uh, runs a little cafe, and it's usually open until quite late. And, and I was very anxious to close his account. I, I've been working on the books, you see, and... Uh, uh, well, now, how much did he owe your firm? Forty francs. And at midnight or thereabouts, you went halfway across Paris to collect forty francs for your firm. You are an exceptionally conscientious employee, Monsieur Bonnet. Well, I, I... I've been to a theater not far from his cafe. Oh, I see. And being in the neighborhood, you decided to stop in and see him. Yes, yes, that's it. But he wasn't at the cafe. Oh, no, sir. 
So you set out for home? Yes, sir. Walking? Yes, sir. Through the rain? Uh, wait. Yes, sir. I, you, I didn't think I could afford a cab. I, I'm far from being a wealthy man. Sir. Yet you could afford to attend a theater. Oh, well, I... But you see, that's, that's just the point. I... I couldn't afford the theater and the cab both. I, oh. oh, I know you don't believe me, but I'm telling you the truth. I swear it. I didn't have... Sit it. down, Monsieur Bonneau. Now, no one's accused you of not telling the truth. Oh, but you think I'm lying. Well, why should you lie? It would be a very easy matter to find out if you do work for Roger and Son, and if you did attend the theater, and if you called at Cartier's Café. Oh, I... <laughs> yeah, well, now tell me once more. Tell me just how this man tried to rob you. Well, I was walking past the cemetery rather rapidly, and it was late, and, and it was raining, and suddenly he sprang at me. From where? Where was he standing? I don't know. From, from the shadow of the wall. You didn't see him then until he sprang at you? No, sir. The first thing I knew, he was upon me. He buried me down. He didn't shout first to tell you to put up your hands? Oh, no, sir. He leaped upon me like, like some wild beast. It almost knocked me off my feet. I see. Valsan reports that he was a very old man. It doesn't seem possible that he could attack you so violently. Oh, but he did. He did. And and then I struck at him with my cane, and and uh, and he fell. Did you hit him very hard? No. No, no I, I couldn't have hit him very hard. I, I was off balance when I struck. I Oh, I just thrashed out wildly. Mm, this is the cane you hit him with, is it not? Yes. Yeah, very light. You couldn't have hit him hard without breaking it. That's right. That's right. I... Mm-hmm. Now, tell me, were you ever in the Army? Why, why, yes. Well, how long ago? I was discharged three, no, three, four years ago. What branch of the Army? The Infantry? Yes, sir. Uh, now, Monsieur Bonneau, as a member of the Infantry, you no doubt learned to use a bayonet, didn't you? Why, I, I just... I... You did, didn't you? Well, yes, of course, but... No. Did you ever see this bayonet before? No. No. Well, look at it carefully. Well, I tell you, I've never seen it. I've never seen... Yeah, it's the bayonet with which you killed that man. It was picked up near the cemetery wall. Unfortunately, the rain washed off the bloodstains and your fingerprints. My, my fingerprints? Yeah, but... Well, what do you but... mean? What, what are you talking about? I've never seen that thing. Yeah, sit down now. I... Sit down. But I... Sit down. All right, that's better now. Now, let's have the truth. All right. I've told you the truth. I've told you all I know about it. The man... I said I want the truth. Uh, Very well. Since you don't want to tell me what happened, I'll tell you. You were the one who crouched in the shadow of the cemetery wall. In your hand, you held this bayonet, a souvenir from your army days. No, no, I... Yeah, and as that man came past, you leaped out at him, plunged this bayonet into his throat. That's what killed him. Not a blow with the cane, but this band... That's not true. It's not true. And what's more, Monsieur Bonneau, this isn't your first murder. On last Friday night, oh, wait, you wait, were wait, out of the... Oh. Oh. oh, come in, Dr. Mortimer. Did you finish the examination? Yes. Yeah. You can let this fellow go. What? Let him go? Why, he's practically convicted right now. Yes, let him go. He's been telling you the truth. But this bayonet here is... The wound wasn't made with a bayonet. I should say it was made with a razor. And this young fellow didn't do it. He's no more guilty of attacking that man than I am. No, no, he, he attacked me. It was just as I said. He, he leaped at me. And... Yeah, now, how do you know he didn't do it? Because that body that I examined has been a corpse for days. A corpse? And the cause of death was suicide. Do you believe that a dead man... Walking on the streets of Paris and attacking a pedestrian? Well, uh, wait. I haven't finished yet. Well, I started out to tell you a true ghost story. I said I was going to try to make you believe it. But right now, I bet you think I'm just about the biggest liar that ever walked on two legs. I told you that one rainy January night in Paris, a gendarme heard a cry for help. The cry came from a spot just out the side of the walls of San Panas Cemetery. When the gendarme arrived, he found two men, one of them leaning breathlessly against the wall, the other lying on the sidewalk. The fellow leaning against the wall said his name was Bano. He claimed he had been passing the cemetery when this other man had leaped upon him and tried to rob him. He said he had struck his assailant with a cane. 
But Bonneau's story didn't seem to jibe with the facts of the case. The man on the sidewalk was dead. He was a very old man. It didn't seem possible that he'd attempt to rob a husky young fellow like Bonneau. Moreover, the cane with which Bonneau said he had struck his assailant was a light walking stick, hardly capable of doing a serious damage at all, let alone heavy enough to kill a man. But that wasn't the only questionable point in Bonneau's story. Examination revealed that the dead man had a knife wound, a ragged gash in his neck, and near the wall was found a long bayonet, such as used in the French army. Well, it looked like an open and shut case against Bonneau. The police believed that he was the one who had been the assailant. He had attacked the old man and killed him. In fact, not long before... There had been another murder outside the cemetery wall. A hand and several other dismembered portions of a body had been found. And authorities believed that Bonneau was only guilty of that. Yes, it looked pretty bad for Bonneau. And then came a surprise. The identity of the dead man. It was found that he had committed suicide the week previous. And had been in his grave for three days. So Bonneau couldn't possibly have killed him. A dead man who had been buried for three days had apparently climbed out of his grave and had attacked a pedestrian. No wonder you think I'm stretching the truth. But wait a minute. The next morning in the inspector's office... Yes? Oh, good morning, doctor. Come on in. Well, what did you find on the bayonet? Nothing. Nothing. At least nothing to indicate that Bono used it last night. I'm afraid you're wasting your time trying to build a case against him. Yes? What makes you think so? Dupre tells me that Bono's story about going to Cartier's Cafe between 12 and 1 o'clock to collect the bill is true. He says three different people saw Bono there. Well, what of it? That doesn't prove anything, except that Bono might have been trying to establish an alibi. An alibi for what? You certainly aren't accusing him of murdering a man who's been dead and in his grave for a week. No, and I certainly don't believe dead men walk in the streets of Paris and hold up wayfarers either. Bono said it leaped on him with the ferocity of a wild beast. And without warning, didn't utter a sound. Well, maybe Bono's lying. He's told the truth in every other respect. Why should he lie about that? What has he to gain by it? Oh, I don't know. But dead men don't get up out of their graves and go walking around the street. Look here. Do you recall that incident where someone, a servant girl, I believe it was, claimed she saw a ghost near San Panas Cemetery? Yes, but... Oh, she was running from her shadow. If I remember correctly, several others saw it, too. All of them couldn't have been frightened by their own shadows. In fact, I understand the people in the neighborhood of San Panas Afraid to go near the cemetery after sundown. Ah, they're a pack of superstitious fools. Oh, I don't know. Someone who apparently wasn't superstitious did go there several nights ago and was murdered. Packed to pieces. And I don't believe the police have discovered who the murderer was. Or what he did with the body. Well, we'll find out who committed that murder. And anyway, what is it to do with Bono's case? That's what I've been wondering. Mm. There might be a connection between those ghost stories and that murder and what happened to Bono last night. As I say, I didn't find any blood stains on the bayonet. But I did find something else. What? At some time or other, the blade had been thrust into the ground, possibly to clean it. In the little space where the blade joins the hilt, I found a small quantity of earth. I examined it under a microscope. Mixed with it were small particles of flesh. Flesh? Yes, human flesh. Mm. That bayonet apparently had been used to dismember a body. Then, as I say, the blade cleaned by thrusting it into the ground. Well, what are you getting at? Simply that the bayonet might have been the same instrument used in that murder last Friday night. Oh, we've already looked into that. Bono worked at his office last Friday night until quite late, and then went directly home. I didn't say Bono committed the murder. Well, then who did? What's the point? The point is that the murder took place on Friday evening, 
the same day that this dead man found last night was buried. But good heavens, you're not insinuating that a dead man committed the murder? People see a ghastly figure lurking in the shadow of Tom Parnas. Later, someone is brutally murdered there. And after that, Mono is attacked, strikes his assailant down, and it proves to be a corpse. Near it is found the knife that the murder was committed with. What's your theory? Well, that you should have been a fiction writer instead of a physician. But as they return the corpse to the vault this afternoon, suppose you and I go out to the cemetery this evening and see that it stays in the vault and doesn't go prowling around scaring people. No, thank you. <laughs> Besides, I have an appointment at 8 o'clock. Oh, come along. I might be able to show you something interesting. I'll meet you at 4.30. All right, 4.30 at my office. And so that evening, as dusk was falling, two figures made their way along the gravel path that wound through the deserted, wind-swept cemetery. That's the vault just ahead. But I don't want to approach it by the path. Let's cut across over in here. Come on over this way. All right. This is close enough. Now we can watch from behind that clump of shrubs. Come on. Come on over here. See here. Would you mind explaining to me just why we're doing all this, uh, uh, this new thing? Why, Doctor, we're here to get a glimpse of the specter of San Panas. Weren't you the one that advanced the theory that there really was a ghost? I didn't say that. I said there might be a connection between the fact that people thought they saw a ghost and the murder last Friday and what happened to Bono. Yes, I think there is a connection. You've probably come closer to the truth than any of us. But we'll have to wait until a few seconds after five o'clock to make sure. Maybe longer. A few seconds after five o'clock? Yes, until after sunset. What's sunset got to do with it? Well, Doctor, I've been doing a little investigating since I talked with you this morning. I've discovered a number of interesting things. Things that seem to fit very snugly into your theory. For example... This corpse that supposedly attacked Bono was the corpse of a suicide. Yes, but what... Uh... And I found there is a belief that a suicide is not permitted the calm and quiet of the grave, that he is doomed for a time to walk the night, that at sunset he arises out of his tomb. Oh, that's all superstitious nonsense. Now see here, yes, perhaps it is. Perhaps it is. That's exactly what I want to find out. For who can say where superstition leaves off and scientific facts begin? You surely can't be serious. Only I am serious. There might even be a corpse emerge from that vault. Oh. There's the chapel clock. But we still might have a long wait. Wait for what? Nothing's going to happen. And if it did, it's getting too dark to see anything. I'm going... Shh, shh. Wait a moment. Lamar, quiet. But good Lord. I swear I saw the door of that vault move. There it is again. The creak of the hinge. The door is opening. Keep quiet. Lamar, in the doorway of the vault. Look out! The figure, the figure of... Look out! Lamar, Inspector Lamar. Yes, I'm here, Bowser, over here. Please, he got away. Starts around the other side of the vault. Oh, that's all right. You play will stop him. And even if he doesn't, the man can't get far with the charge of buckshot in him. 
That shotgun trap of yours was an excellent idea. Only for a moment I didn't think it was going to work. I said it so the vault door had to be swung entirely open before the gun would discharge. Yeah. I didn't expect he'd open the door from the inside. Yeah. He must have been hiding in there. All right, find a prey. And if he isn't caught, investigate every chemist shop, doctor's office, and hospital in the neighborhood for a man with a shotgun wound. But, but who is he? Oh, <laughs> you're still here, doctor. Yes, but good heavens. What happened? Who was he? The maniac who's been breaking into the vault, stealing bodies, and hacking them to pieces with a bayonet. You mean? I told you I had discovered a lot of interesting things today. Now, one of them was the fact that a body was stolen from that vault last Friday. The attendant kept it a secret, afraid he'd be blamed for carelessness. But that hand, the police found, wasn't the hand of a murdered man. It was the hand of a corpse. But... But this thing that happened to Bono last night... Oh, that's very easily explained. The maniac happened to toss a body over the cemetery wall just as Bono passed. The body fell on him. That's why he thought the man had leaped at him. But see here. See here. How did you know the fellow was going to rob this particular vault tonight? Well, I wasn't sure that he'd show up tonight. But if I knew he did, this would be the vault. You see... This is the vault they placed the bodies in before burial. Well, let's be going. You still have time to keep that 8 o'clock appointment, you know. And there's your ghost story. I might add that the maniac was found in a nearby hospital. His name was Francis Bertrand, a non-commissioned officer in the French Army. He had an excellent service record and seemed quite sane except at intervals when, as he expressed it, an irresistible impulse came over him to rob graves. As the French law did not deal with crime of grave robbing, he was tried on a minor charge and served a term of one year. A complete record of the case is in the files of the Paris Criminal Court. And now, uh, do you believe it? 